Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. Aboard the International Space Station, the Expedition 45 crew, including new commander Scott Kelly and Chell Lindgren of NASA, said goodbye to Gennady Padalka of the Russian Federal Space Agency, Andreas Mogensen of ESA, and Aidan Ambatov of the Kazakh Space Agency as the trio climbed aboard their Soyuz spacecraft for the return trip to Earth. The Soyuz landed safely in Kazakhstan on September 11th Eastern Time, September 12th in Kazakhstan, closing out a 168-day mission for Padalka and an eight-day stay on the station for Mogensen and Ambatov. Engineers at NASA's Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans have welded together the first two segments of the next Orion crew module, bringing NASA a small step closer to sending astronauts to Mars. The primary structure of Orion's crew module is made of seven large aluminum pieces welded together using a state-of-the-art technique called friction stir welding to produce an incredibly strong bond. This Orion will be launched on NASA's new Space Launch System rocket on a combined flight test beyond the far side of the moon. At Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, panels for a test version of the Space Launch System's Launch Vehicle Stage Adapter, or LVSA, are being welded together. This key piece of hardware connects two major sections of the SLS, the core stage and the upper stage. When test versions of all the rocket's parts are completed, engineers will move the 56-foot-tall structure to a test stand to verify the integrity of the hardware. Images from NASA's Dawn spacecraft are giving scientists the closest yet views of the gleaming bright spots from Arcator Crater on the dwarf planet Ceres. The images, a composite view made from two different shots, and virtual fly-around animations of the crater, including a topographic map, have about three times better resolution than the images from a previous Dawn orbit of Ceres in June. The expected year-long data download begun recently by NASA's New Horizons spacecraft includes new high-resolution images that reveal the diversity and complexity of the Pluto system. Some of the early imagery appears to feature possible dunes, ice flows that apparently oozed out of mountainous regions onto plains, ice lakes, and even networks of valleys that may have been carved by material flowing over Pluto's surface. The images downloaded so far have more than doubled the amount of Pluto's surface seen at resolutions as good as 440 yards per pixel. A memorial event for the September 11, 2001 attack on New York's World Trade Center was held at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The event at the center's Fire Station 1 paid tribute to the 343 fire and rescue personnel who lost their lives during the attack. A piece of the World Trade Center also was on display at the ceremony. On that day 14 years ago, astronaut Frank Culbertson, the only American off the planet at that time, captured footage of the aftermath from the International Space Station. September is National Preparedness Month, a perfect opportunity to take advantage of emergency training activities offered by your community or place of work. Some employees at NASA headquarters took a CPR class recently. The emergency management teams at all NASA facilities encourage everyone to visit www.ready.gov to learn more about what to do at work and home to prepare for the unexpected. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov slash twan.